So here we are again. You're looking at me and I'm looking at you in year two of COVID. When I penned the first version of this presentation, we were in a very different place. It was summer and COVID numbers were down across the board. We were looking ahead to what was next, putting the pandemic mostly behind us. But that's not the case today. And it's likely not going to be the case for a very long time. We will continue to experience the ups and the downs, the surges and the squalls for years to come. So what do we do? Focus on COVID? Focused on what's next in healthcare? Press that tiny little X box at the top right hand corner of your screen and say, forget it, I'm done. Leading in this time of COVID is hard. It is hard for all of you working on the ground in healthcare, and it's hard for associations like NACU, whose job it is to support you. Everyone's trying hard to do the right thing, but right now, nobody knows what the right thing is. Two months ago, we thought we were at the tail end of the pandemic. And now we're not sure if we're at the beginning, the middle, or maybe we're at the beginning of the end. As I speak with you today, I'm going to do the only thing that I know how to do. And that is to put one foot in front of the other. To talk to you about how I see you, how I see this profession, and how I see NACU supporting you in the future. I know you need a professional home right now. And I know you need a professional hug right now. And I wish I could reach out to you and give you one. My hope is that by the time we wrap up this talk in about 35 minutes, you're gonna feel like you got both. When I consider what we've been through with COVID, I think about what we experienced and how we are making our way through it. We've got a long way to go, but how did we make it this far? Early on, many of you leapt into action, transitioning to full or partial remote work, figuring out how to navigate PPE shortages and how to report accurate COVID case counts and deaths in real time. You surged up and down incident command centers and you flexed surgery schedules as best as you could. And you're still doing that. Some of you with a clinical background ran double time, both serving in your quality capacity and pitching in to work on the COVID unit. What you did was amazing. But the why, why you did it, I think about that a lot. I live not too far from a firehouse and sometimes when I hear the sirens ring out, I wonder about the firefighters why. Why do firefighters run into burning buildings to rescue people and pets when everyone else is standing in shock or running in the other direction? As I've reflected on that, I think there's three things that are standing out to me and I'd like to share those with you. First, they have the training on how to best tackle the job. They know the best way to enter the building. They know how to knock down walls and they know how to create a safe way out. Second, they have the tools and the gears to do the work well. Helmets, fireproof clothing, hoses, and masks. And third, they have a deep desire burning inside of them to do good, to make lives better, to help people and to make an impact. As I reflect on your role in healthcare in the pandemic, I wonder about your why. Maybe it's because you can't let your colleagues go it alone. You think, you go, I go. Maybe it's because of your oath as a practitioner. Or maybe your why is because your workplace represents your community, your family, and you want to be there to help. Although Delta is giving us a run for our money, it's a good thing you're there. And because you are, things are better. I've spoken to quality professionals over the past year, and I have heard firsthand about the impact they're having, and it is profound. I met a young woman from Northwestern Medical Center, pretty new to her career, that created a COVID-19 testing and case confirmation protocol. It was a delight to hear her tell the story about stepping up and asking to take 
ownership of this critical process. More amazing was her success. She started working with one unit on COVID reporting, and pretty soon, she was leading around 75 professionals across the system to ensure they were working as a team to capture, track, and report the data to the hospital and to public health authorities. Her story was wonderful, and I will always remember what she said to me when I asked her about her why. She was very intentional, and she said to me that someday she knew someone would ask her about her contribution to quality during the COVID crisis, and she wanted to be able to say that she stepped up, that her leadership mattered. That young woman is Teresa Pollock, and she and other leaders will showcase their work on Wednesday of this week here at NACU Next. Teresa and thousands others like her have decided to do quality on purpose, with purpose. You know, in addition to the personal touch points like this, NACU also conducts pulse check research with our constituents so that we can better understand the contributions on a broader level. And when we did this, here's what we learned. In the heart of the pandemic, July 2020, 36% of you told us that you were perceived as more valuable than before the pandemic. When we asked again in April 2021, 41% of you said you perceived yourself as more valuable. And in July 2021, we heard from you that 51% feel more valuable than before the pandemic. Wow. Wow. So this begs the question, why is the profession of healthcare quality and those professionals working in quality perceived as more valuable than before the pandemic? At NACU, we believe it was because you had the training on quality, the time-tested quality tools, and the method to take on the tough challenges. And probably most importantly, you have a desire compelling you to do good, to help people, to make an impact and to make healthcare better. Because you stepped up and because you ran into the burning building, your visibility and credibility increased a lot. It's amazing to see the profession that was once labeled as regulatory and compliance is now leading the charge to improve quality, safety, and win the race to value. I'm not saying this wasn't happening in some places before, but it is quite clear. The reliance on quality professionals during COVID, and in most cases, it increased dramatically, and that relevance has staying power. So congratulations. You are no longer the best kept secret in healthcare. This is your time to shine even brighter. You know, the pandemic has been challenging for NACU too. As a nonprofit membership and certification organization, we've had some tough issues to grapple with. I remember when COVID first hit, many businesses and associations, they coiled up, hunkered down and decided to wait it out instead of investing more in their mission and more in their constituents. NACU's board and I had some really powerful conversations about what NACU would do. Would we coil up too? Wait it out? No. How could we? We believe strongly that with the onset of COVID, our members needed NACU more than ever. So we decided to give more more opportunities for CPHQ certification, more free resources for our members, and more professional hugs delivered as encouraging words from our leadership. We also believe that as the pandemic surged on, there would be more urgency for quality and safety and value, and that some of the longstanding and often artificial barriers that quality professionals face, they dissipate. So pausing to weather the storm was not an option for us. For 45 years, NACU has focused on competencies and professional development for healthcare quality professionals. And for the past seven years, NACU's board and I had significantly accelerated our efforts to advance healthcare quality competencies. We'd come so far. 
too far to give up now. For those of you that may not know or may be vaguely familiar with NACU's competency framework, I want to give you a quick level set on this work. So in 2014, NACU developed the first generation work product to define healthcare quality competencies. The work product was sent to NACU members. We had 6,000 at the time, as well as key opinion leaders who we wanted to know about this groundbreaking work. The box, it was polished perfect even had confetti inside, and it carried a strong message. The only thing changing faster than healthcare is your role. So before too long, the email started coming in and the phone, it began to ring. Members said they finally had a resource that articulated what they did and what they should be doing at work. They said they felt recognized by NACU and valued. I vividly recall the people who reached out to tell me that they literally carried this book into meetings and showed their leadership so that they could say, this is what I do. Not only that, but graduate programs and quality and safety reached out to say they wanted to use the competencies to amass the curriculum for the graduate programs. It was at that point that we knew we were onto something. So we put our head down again and built the second generation framework, which we affectionately refer to today as the wheel. The framework has eight dimensions, 29 competency statements and 486 skill statements that are stratified against foundational, proficient and advanced levels. We validated this framework twice in the market, first by those doing the work and second by those leading the work that said yes, that's what I want my people to be doing. And that is what is missing in healthcare. The wheel is a simplistic version of the competencies. And you can see here, I've listed the eight domains. So you can see we're covering a lot of ground. You see the tool is both broad and it is deep. Since developing the framework, we've been assessing individuals and teams via our new solution that we call Workforce Accelerator and we're conducting research on this framework, learning about how you, the professional workforce, are expressing these competencies at work. And now, we've amassed the first and only database in the world that can articulate the work that healthcare quality professionals do relative to workforce competencies for quality and safety. I'm gonna get into more details on that later, but here's the point I wanted to make. As we looked at how far we had come and the impact that we had had on the profession, and the impact we knew we were going to have on healthcare, we knew we could not stop. A member of NACU's board, Nidia Williams, said this of NACU's work on your behalf over the past seven years. She said, NACU has arrived at the intersection where preparation meets opportunity. And you're there too. This is it. The moment when healthcare took notice and saw the value of the quality profession. And now is the moment where we can help advance health and healthcare like never before. I mentioned NACU does a lot of research. The result of that research tells us that 90% of you think that skill building is critical to success at work. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. We know too that you are a profession of positive people. Our research tells us that 84% of you say you're happy at work. Yes, you're tired. Yes, you're sometimes frustrated with the complexities of COVID. Who isn't? But you're happy. This is contrary to other headlines about many other professions in the healthcare workforce. And I attribute that in part to the improvement mindset that you have. You don't let barriers and setbacks get you down. You are wired to see opportunity for improvement and that is really empowering. As you look for opportunity to build your skills and you match that with the attitude and the heart of a quality professional, I think you're in great shape. I also think you're in great shape because NACU continues to work behind the scenes and we're preparing you for what's next. As the professional home for the healthcare quality profession and those who are doing the work of quality, NACU is keeping our finger on the pulse of megatrends that affect healthcare today and into 
the future. And I'd like to share some thinking about how these megatrends are gonna affect healthcare and so how they're also gonna affect you. My kids, they play hockey. Ben is eight and Sam is almost 12. And those who are hockey parents, I know are gonna agree with me when I say, hockey is a lifestyle as much as it is a sport. Well, hockey great, Wayne Gretzky's father told him that good players skate to where the puck is. Great players skate to where the puck is going. It's in that spirit that I would like to share with you some emerging megatrends that will keep us focused on where the puck is going in healthcare and specifically how leaders like you need to prepare for what's next in your career. And then I'd like to share an inspired vision approved by the NACU Board of Directors to work hand in hand with you to do what you do best, improve. Improve healthcare and improve ourselves. So we're gonna come up and out to scan the environment, and then I'm gonna bring you down to the ground floor where the action is. And remember, I share this with you not to overwhelm you, but to say at NACU, we got you. So there are a few big evolutions coming our way, and I'm gonna discuss three of them here with you today. Number one, the trend in worldwide workforce shortages. Number two, an aging population. And number three, automation and AI. We're gonna go quick, so let's get started. Let's start with the impact of labor shortages and an aging population. So in 2013, about 60% of the world's population, they lived in countries with fertility rates below the replacement rate. What that means is that we're not growing the population enough to support our workforce needs in the future. The European Commission expects that by 2060, Germany's population is gonna shrink by a fifth. And that means the number of people who are working will fall from 54 million to 36 million. China's labor force, it peaked in 2012 and is also in decline. It's even a force them to abandon their one child policy. Here in the United States, federal data published by the US Chamber of Commerce tells us that there are now half as many available workers for every open job in the United States, particularly in the hard hit sectors, which include education, health services, and business services. They're reporting a lot fewer job seekers than the total number of jobs that are even open. As a matter of fact, here in the US, in a recent report by the American Association of Medical Colleges, we know them well as the double AMC, they stated that the US population, it's gonna grow by 10% by 2033. Seems like this growth would put us in a good position, right? Unfortunately, that's not the case. Which brings me to mega trend number two. By 2033, the population of older Americans will increase by 45%. Yeah, 45%. The workforce shortage will likely mean less caregivers for the elderly too, forcing families to choose between work and caring for an aging parent further exacerbating this workforce shortage. With 10,000 people signing up a day for Medicare, the impact is profound. We are headed for a workforce gap that will have serious ramifications in our country and around the world. A smaller workforce is going to place extreme urgency on pr improving productivity. This may cause us to rethink the economy's potential. How are we gonna thrive in the US economy, let alone in a global economy, in the face of the smaller workforce? The answer involves our third topic of automation and AI. The answer is we need to boost productivity on tasks that can be automated or that can be executed through AI, and we need to upskill our people to solve more complex challenges. Automation and workforce development here, they're like lack and key. And you can be sure that global workforce transformation is here to stay. In a report called How the Workforce Learns, Harvard Business says that 54% of the workforce is gonna require significant upskilling and reskilling within the next five years, 54%. And you guys have probably seen those robots who deliver pizza, right? Same thing. There may not be a pizza delivery person coming to your house much longer, but maybe that person can be reskilled to work in logistics or even learn to code the robot or drone that leaves you with that piping hot pizza. 
Socrates was right when he said, focus your energy not on fighting the old, but on building the new. That's what we do at NAQ. And that's what you do as quality professionals. So for those of you doing the work, your roles, they're gonna need to evolve and your skills, you're gonna have to keep them sharp. And for those of you leading the work, it's going to be very important that the workforce you do have is qualified, prioritized, and that you resource it. You may be thinking, we're gonna need to do more training then, right? No, not right. The first generation approach to training, it's not gonna get us where we need to be in terms of workforce productivity and the results. Any one hour training on any topic, selected on a whim based on this buffet of content, lined up with no reference point, it's a thing of the past. Education must be pursued with a holistic approach in mind. No more time and no more money should be spent on education that is not intentional, advancing your career path and advancing the goals of your employer. A 2020 McKenzie survey revealed that 80% of business leaders say that their capability building programs are not achieving desired impacts in business. And NACU agrees. We know staff and employers, they don't have the luxury of time to waste. They need to solve for this now and they are looking for new solutions to upskilling their workforce. Because remember, 54% of the workforce is going to need upskilling and reskilling in the next five years to meet the changing employment demands. AI will take the jobs that can be automated and humans will have the potential for newer and more exciting roles that require critical thinking, decision-making, facilitation, and strong communication skills. Tomorrow at NAQ Next, I'm interviewing CEOs from RL Datix, Metasolve, and Ferrum Health, who are gonna emphasize this point and back it up with examples about how the workforce needs to evolve to leverage the opportunities that are present with technology. The question is, how do we prepare? There is a new way to handle learning and development. And on that topic, NAQU is headed where the puck is going. Historically, when we talk about training, that means learning. So learning is about information transfer and retention. It's not necessarily about application and impact. If knowledge is transferred, learning is happening even if it doesn't solve any particular problem. Skilling, on the other hand, it's the transfer of knowledge with an intent to bring impact through behaviors and actions on the job. When people are able to apply knowledge to address specific issues, they're using skills. Both learning and skilling are important, but you should know they're different things. Early in my career, when I was trying to understand the nuanced differences between learning and skilling, somebody explained it to me like this, using a voting analogy. So if you read a book or take a class and can tell someone how to properly sail a boat from one side of the lake to the other, you learn something. Skilling is different. If you are skilled at boating, you can sail your boat across the lake without flipping it over. So learning may change what you know, but skilling changes the way you operate and impacts the work that you do. And more and more, these skills will become conditions for your employment. It's not gonna be good enough to say that you can do the job. You're gonna need to prove it. This also means new ways to track credentials. Verification efforts, like credentialing and privileging, that's gonna be commonplace for more and more roles, even non-clinical ones, even yours. You're going to need to verify your credentials. And guess what? That process, it's gonna be automated too. Did you know that technologies exist today to take credentialing and privileging from a months long process to an hours long process? This will change the way individuals like each of you look for and retain a job. But what about employers? Employers must invest in this as much or even more than employees. The relationship is codependent and in fact, so is the result. I heard the other day that Amazon has committed $700 million to upskilling 100,000 of its employees over the next four years. That's $7,000 per employee. Organizations that will be competitive in the future are the ones that have invested in upskilling and the ones that understand that the workforce is the biggest lever that they have to achieve success. 
I know, this represents a lot of change, right? A more compressed workforce with higher expectations. AI and automation and skilling more than learning. Here again, this is when NACU says, we got you. It's our job to keep the finger on the pulse of all of this change. At NACU, we skate to where the puck is going and we are already on track to support our people and to advance this profession. I know, you trust me on that, right? But as the saying goes, trust but verify. So let me offer you a couple of specific details on our planned actions and next steps. First, we have doubled down on the CPHQ and through our research, Evidence from our database shows that CPHQs are performing at more advanced ends of the competency spectrum across all eight domains of the competency framework when they are compared to their non-CPHQ peers. This research is the first of its kind and it's adding net new knowledge to the field of healthcare quality. So why does this matter? Because you are going to need credentials that set you apart and CPHQ is one of them. It's not enough for me or for you to say CPHQs matter. We needed to prove it, and we did. And now we are prepared to arm you with the information you need to get your colleagues and your leaders to take notice of you and the very unique skills that you offer. Not only that, but as leaders in the field, it's your job to advocate for your colleagues so that they get their CPHQ as well as you. And we know that you're gonna need data points to back you up. The credential was solid before, but this research confirms that CPHQs pack a punch. Based on data from our innovative professional assessment tool, for the first time ever, we can understand the work that healthcare quality professionals are doing across this entire competency framework. And this data shows that in nearly every single competency, 29 of them, more CPHQs describe that their work behaviors are at the proficient or advanced levels compared to their non-CPHQ peers who are more in foundational levels. There's an entire session on this topic tomorrow that you should definitely attend. Susie Miltner, who was our lead author on the paper, and April Taylor, who's the commission chair of HQCC, are going to present on this groundbreaking research, so don't miss it. NACU recognizes that it will be difficult too to achieve our vision to make healthcare better one quality professional at a time. So while we continue to support individuals, we also know we need an enterprise approach to upskilling healthcare quality. And to do that, we offer Workforce Accelerator. NACU's answer for employers who care about workforce competencies and who care about upskilling. Workforce Accelerator offers a bird's eye view into workforce strengths and opportunities. Furthermore, it makes a connection between the relationship of workforce competencies to measures like leapfrog scores and CMS star ratings. Finally, Workforce Accelerator pinpoints training and upskilling needs by design so that we move beyond learning to skilling and that we do it precisely so as to make sure that the time you put into your career development pays off for you and for your employer. Also of interest to the healthcare leaders and employers, NICU recently launched a healthcare quality and safety benchmarking program. This means no more scampering to make a really good guess on what resources you need to support your quality infrastructure and no more fighting for resources without the benchmark to make the business case for you. The research just kicked off and there is still time to participate. NACU wants to be the context in which individuals succeed in their career. And NACU can be the context in which organizations support their quality workforce. Over the next few years, NACU will be continuing this effort so that we are increasingly making informed, prospective recommendations to you about how to optimize the quality workforce and to make healthcare better. In 10 years, I think this profession will look much more like other professions with defined academic pathways, consistent job functions, and consistent structures. No more quality teams developed on the fly at a local level without the benefit of the NACU standard. Your life's work is around reducing variability in healthcare delivery, and NACU's life work is around reducing variability in healthcare quality workforce competencies 
and giving this profession a home and a voice. When we look back in the history books, I believe strongly that this will be the moment written where healthcare quality professionals stepped up to advance healthcare and where we rose to the occasion in front of us and did what we do best, improve, improve ourselves and improve healthcare. This is the moment when preparation meets opportunity. I believe strongly that if there is a will, there is a way. And every data point and every experience that I have tells me that this profession is ready for both the challenges of today and tomorrow because you have something that very few people have. You have a different perspective. Like the firefighters that run into the burning building, you run into quality challenges because you don't see them as challenges. You see them as opportunity. I believe in your power and I believe in the power of this profession. Keep up the good work and prepare yourself for what's next. Immerse yourself in this conference, which has two and a half days of keynote worthy presentations. It's all main stage, top of the line faculty, best in class. Not only that, but this event has been designed to give you a curated journey through the content with each session building off the session that preceded it. At the end of the event, you'll know what's next in healthcare quality, and you will be sure that NACU is the organization that's gonna help you navigate it. As we've all learned, no one can predict where COVID is going. But what I do know now is that NACU will be right here with you, monitoring the megatrends, investing in learning and skilling and bringing net new knowledge to the field that puts the deserved spotlight on you and all of your good work, preparing you for what's next. Because at NACU, we got you.